Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta and with me here I have Anjali Bhardwaj. An Anjali is a social activist. She's been working towards strengthening the implementation of the Right to Information Act for quite a few years now. She happens to be a co-convener of the national campaign for the people's right to information and a founding member of the Satark Nagrik Sangathan. Anjali, Dhanewad, Yahani ke liye. The Right to Information Act 2005 replaced the Freedom of Information Act, which was in force till three years earlier. And this was supposed to be, quote unquote, a very practical regime to enable citizens to obtain information from public authorities so that there would be greater transparency and accountability so that those who are in positions of power and authority they, they the way they worked would be transparent now over the years we've seen various attempts have been made to dilute the effectiveness of this act yet this act remains a very very important act in the first 10 years of its existence, over 17 and a half million applications have been filed. Every day, over 4,800 applications are filed. And if I remember correctly, roughly 6 million applications are filed in a year. So if I ask you to give a broad overview, in the last 13 years, the law of the Supreme Court in the world, how has it been implemented and what according to you are the main shortcomings in the implementation of this act? So the first thing is that the right to information law, uh, the demand for it came from people, from people who recognized the link between their ability to access information from the government and their ability to access their other rights and entitlements. So it's a very potent uh, law, very potent tool in the hands of the people which empowers them to hold the government accountable. And research has shown that, like you said, about 6 million RTI applications are being filed every year in the country. This is the highest globally. And zyada tar jo suchna hai, jo suchna ke adhikar kanun ka istemal hai, wo uh, haashiye pe reh rahe log, jo ant karib log hai, wo kar rahe hai. Kyunke wo apne ration, pension, sadke, pani, bijli, iske baare mein jab bhi unko bhrashta chaar ke karan unki adhikar nahi milte hai, ya animitao ke कारण अधिकार नहीं मिलते तो वो सूचना के अधिकार कानून में सूचना मांगकर अपनी लड़ाई लड़ते हैं दे स्ट्रगल एंड होल्ड द गवर्नमेंट अकाउंटेबल एंड इट्स प्रूवन टू बी रियली वेरी एंपावरिंग फॉर द कॉमन पर्सन ऑफ दिस कंट्री एंड व्हिच इज व्हाई देयर इज सच अ वाइब्रेंट यूज ऑफ दिस लॉ इन द कंट्री and it's not just the poorest and the most marginalized using this law to hold the government accountable for day to day rights and entitlements may i just interrupt you jab ye kanoon Lagu hua, when it started, it was believed that it was largely being used by the bureaucrats, by government officials, their transfers, their postings, their promotions, their salaries. But you are saying in the recent past, the poor and the marginalized, that they, for them, this act has become that much more important. Because as you rightly said, it concerns their basic entitlements, whether it be food, whether it be shiksha, ya swast. So is, do we see this as a positive change that has taken place in the recent past? So Paranjoy, I would say that this is not a change. This is, like I said, this was the reason why the law was demanded by people and they have continued to use it like that. And like I was saying, it's not just for their basic rights that people are using this law. They're also using it to hold the highest offices in the country accountable. So whether it's the prime minister and people are asking about his educational qualifications or abhi tak nahi mila, lekin log pooch rahe hain. Or Spriti Irani ji ka bhi jo educational qualifications 
asking yeah. about the foreign travels of the Prime Minister. People are asking about the judges uh, of the Supreme Court, their assets and liabilities. People are asking about, uh, you know, information related to who are the corporate loan defaulters in, in public sector banks. So people are really holding the highest offices to account through the RTI law. And that is the reason why we've seen such a huge backlash in terms of the government's successive governments reacting to people using this law. Because this law came, uh, I'm not even sure that it was uh, the p potential and the power of it was Which recognized realized. and realized earlier. And very soon, we had a backlash which has taken several forms. What you have described is one of those forms where there's almost been a myth creation, where uh, even uh, successive prime ministers, like the previous prime minister, Mr. Manmohan Singh, also said that the law is being misused. They're frivolous and vexatious RTI applications. There have been senior officials in the governments who have said that mainly it's being used by the bureaucrats. But there's been nothing to back their statements. In fact, evidence, like I said, has shown that, that it is being used, by, is the being used by the underprivileged, by the ordinary okay. citizen of the country to hold the government accountable for various delivery of various services and to hold them accountable. Anjali, in the just concluded uh, monsoon session of parliament, the amendment bill, the bill to amend the RTI Act of 2005 was not introduced. Now, organizations such as the one you work with, they opposed it. And you argued that this bill fundamentally weakens the autonomy of the information commissions, the Central Information Commission, the State Information Commissions, the Information Commissioners. Why? Because in terms of salaries, allowances, their retirement age at 65, Come and said they've been put on par with the Election Commission of India. But why did you argue that this bill, which hasn't yet, it's not act, it's not law yet, sought to, I mean, why, how do you argue that this has some way diluted the autonomy uh, of, of the uh, Information Commissions, the Central and the State Information Commissions? Right. So uh, if one looks at the current structure of the law at the moment, basically, if one doesn't get the uh, one's information that one is seeking as a citizen, the ultimate adjudicator under the right to information law are the information commissions. So one can go in for an appeal or a complaint to the information commission and it's the job of the information commissions to function independently and whether the government likes it or not, whether that information is inconvenient or embarrassing for the government to disclose. Uh, that includes the prime minister's educational it, it qualifications. Could in, it would include that, it would include a host of other things. The information commissions have the power to direct the government to give this information to people, which is what we have seen happen, even in the case of the educational qualification of the Prime Minister, where the Central Information Commission actually directed the Delhi University to provide the necessary requ uh, requisite documents. And finally, what has happened now, to that? Now, uh, so le le if yeah. to just finish this, now the point is that the right to information law is really a decentralized use of the law. There's no way to control who asks for what information. The way the government is trying to control information access by citizens is by trying to control the information commissions because they feel that if they can somehow make sure that commissions don't function independently, they cannot give the information that they don't but, want but to give what out. What has this got to do? I, I mean, I, there are two questions. What has happened to the application about the Prime Minister's educational qualifications? That's one question. Yes. And the next one is I'm still not convinced why by putting the salaries and allowances of the information commissioners on par with the counterparts in the election commission of India, how this would dilute the autonomy. So the, at the moment, uh, under the law, the salaries of the information commissioners are at par with the election commissions, uh, election commissioners. So this is not anything. ये पहले से है अब चेंज कर रही है सरकार सरकार कह रही है कि केंद्र सरकार तय करेगी उनकी सैलरीज क्या होंगी केंद्र सरकार तय करेगी कि उनका कार्यकाल कितना होगा तो अभी कानून में स्पष्ट लिखा है कि पांच साल का कार्यकाल है सब्जेक्ट टू रिटायरमेंट एज ऑफ 65 इयर्स एंड द द सैलरीज आर नॉट लेफ्ट टू द गवर्नमेंट टू डिस 
side, the salaries are pegged at the level of the election commissioners, which is the same as that of a Supreme Court judge, now which is decided by parliament. So the government doesn't come in, the central government doesn't come in at all. By bringing in these amendments, what the government is trying to do is to control the functioning of the commissions by, it's, it's actually putting, uh, you know, it's an attempt to, uh, to dilute their autonomy because if you're basically, let's say, let's take an, a scenario where the government says that you'll have a one-year time time frame, which will be renewable, which means that if you give inconvenient orders, then it will not be renewed. Your, your so you're saying the information commissioners, the government can choose to either reward them or penalize them indirectly. It could become a way to do that and which is what will compromise their autonomy right. because they're trying to effectively make commissions work like government departments. Okay. And, and that is something which would completely weaken the information law. The other question on the uh, educational qualifications of the Prime Minister, actually the RTI applicant sought information on the results, result related information of the 1978 batch. Uh, the Prime Minister in his election affidavit has written that he uh, he graduated in the year 1978 from the Delhi University. But there seems to be the records are at this point of time not being made available. Am the, I the applicant was not given the information. The matter was agitated in the Central Information Commission and the commissioner there ordered the Delhi University to give the information. Immediately the Delhi University has gone and approached the Delhi High Court and the plea that is being taken is that the privacy of those who studied in, and graduated in that year will be adversely impacted. Now it completely defies logic because the Delhi University holds a public convocation. So everybody's results, whether they passed or failed, are actually put out in the public domain. It's, there is a wide webcast telecast right. of this convention. So we don't, un, we don't, we understand, don't understand the logic. where the privacy argument okay. is coming from and and, it, it's and, and and what about the education qualifications of the former minister for human resources development the current textiles minister smriti this uh, it's the same situation there All as well right. it's it's the matter is being agitated in the delhi high court okay. now your organization has argued that uh, since uh, the narendra modi came to power in may 2014 there has been not a single fresh appointment of an information commissioner without the intervention of the court. Kindly explain what is the situation as far as vacancies at the Central Information Commission and the State Information Commissions are, what is the present status and, and, and the backlog of, of the applications that remain pending. Right. Like I said, Paranjoy, the, the efficacy of the right to information law really depends on how well information commissions are functioning. Yadi koi suchna ke adhikar mein unko unki suchna nahi milti hai aur wo commission mein jate hai, to unki appeal ka complaint ka turant niptara hona chahiye. Varna aap ye sochi ke koi ek vridh mahila hai jo apni pension maang rahi hai aur wo commission mein jati hai aur 10 saal tak unhe intazar karna padta hai, to jab unko suchna milti hai, us kisi kaam ki nahi hai. It doesn't the law says that the, there is a deadline, that the answer has to come within 30 days and in the case of the intelligence agencies and the security agencies, the paramilitary bodies, that is 45 days? Yes, the law is, uh, is very clear in terms of timelines for provision of information. So if as a citizen I file an uh, information application, I'm supposed to get my information ordinarily within 30 days. However, if I don't get the information, I have to go in for a two-stage appeal. The first appeal is within the department, which is usually not very effective. And the second appeal is with the information commissions, which are independent bodies. Now, these independent information commissions are supposed to quickly turn around and give me my uh, direction so that I can access my information. But they are bogged down by a backlog. Backlogs in many cases. And what we are seeing is that the government, successive governments have found state governments and central governments have found that one effective way of actually uh, sort of making sure that the commissions don't function it's well to is to not appoint commissioners. What, what is the backlog of cases pending and what is the backlog or what are the vacancies in these in these commissions? Yes, so if we look at the Central Information Commission for example at the moment there are more than 25,000 backlog uh, pendencies so uh, there are uh, at least 25,000 appeals, appeals and complaints that are waiting with the commission to be disposed of. 
uh, in the meantime, from from this twenty five thousand at the level of the central information Info commission and, alone, and, and if you put this, all the state information commissions, it, put they would together. run into lakhs. Now, if we look at the central information commission from December twenty sixteen onwards, when the first vacancy arose because it was uh, one of the information commissioners retired, till today there are now four vacancies in the central information commission out of a total of eleven commissioners. Four out of eleven. Yes, are and, vacant. And in the states? And uh, so in, with the Central Information Commission, four more vacancies are coming up by the 1st of December, including the Chief Information Commissioner who's going to retire, which would mean that there would be eight vacancies out of 11 in the Central unless Information. Unless these are filled up. Unless these are filled up. And the government is not showing any intention of filling them. They haven't filled even a single one. And, 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 and you said you, unless there is an intervention by the court. Not a single vacancy has been filled by this government in the last four and a half years unless there is an intervention by the courts and again the matter has been agitated in the Supreme Court it's being heard by the Supreme Court where the court has directed that these uh, vacancies must be filled even in the states we have a, a huge problem in Andhra Pradesh ever since the bifurcation into Andhra Pradesh and Telangana took place there's not been a single commissioner that has been appointed in the State Information Commission of Andhra Pradesh okay, so, so it's not just the government of India the Union government or the central government but the state governments are equally guilty of not filling up these positions. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Uh, before we move ahead, one step back, what is the present status of the RTI amendment bill? It was not introduced in parliament that, but that means it, if the government wishes to it can introduce it again at, at, in another session of parliament. Uh, it, it can be the same bill, it could be a different bill. Absolutely. The bill was brought in without any public public consultation what, what, at what all. What they say, pre-legislative uh, consultation. Did not take place at all. The bill was sprung upon people, so to speak, when, when, and even now it has not been put in the public domain. It's because it was circulated amongst members of parliament. and it, 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 kisi ne ji, logon ko, uh, mil gaya se. Unka but unka website, parliament but website, website pe aaj bhi nahi hai, wo bill. Koi consultation nahi hui. Ab, uh, logon ka dabav raha hai, aur ye mein kehna I want to say that it is not the first time that amendment has come to come. But the first time it is definitely like that, without any talking, without any consultation, how has it been done? The first time when the amendments have come and tried to come, the people have been doing it. And this time too, there were strong public protests against these amendments and the government has deferred the introduction in parliament. But it could happen. It could happen in the next session of parliament. It could even be brought in as an ordinance if the government so wishes. Or introduced in the Rajya Sabha. The, the intention from what we understand where it was listed in parliament was to introduce it in the Rajya Sabha which would mean that it would not lapse even when the Lok Sabha is dissolved for elections. All right. Okay. Anjali, two or three other questions that I want to ask you. According to the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, there have been over 300 cases, instances of activists using the Right to Information Act who have been attacked, who have been threatened. And in these last 13 odd years, there have been recorded over 70 cases of murders, two suicides, which appear to be linked directly to the fact that the individuals who've died unnaturally were using the RTI Act. What does this tell you about our society and you talk about transparency and you talk about accountability of public servants? First thing is that with the coming in of the right to information law, the definition of a whistleblower has undergone a huge change. So today potentially we have 1.3 billion people who are potentially whistleblowers in our country because every citizen has the right to access government records which earlier used to only be accessible to government officials. And as a result of that, since the RTI law has come and has been used by people, 
uh, information is coming out and people who are exposing corruption, they are ruffling the feathers of vested interests, powerful vested interests, they have been attacked, they have been threatened, they have been many, many more than just the 300 uh, who have been accounted for. And yes, more than 70 people have even lost their lives. Now, what, what is really happening is that the RTI law is being used by the ordinary citizens of the country to expose corruption, which earlier people had or, no or abuse way. Abuse of power, abuse misuse of, of power, authority. Misuse of authority, of uh, all sorts of inefficiencies in government, but also a, a great deal of corruption that's happening at various levels. And we know that in our country, it's down to the lowest level that corruption happens. So people, for example, uh, just last month, there were at least three killings in Bihar itself. Rajendra Singh, for example, in East Champaran district, was asking for information related to the public distribution system, for, uh, uh, you know, exposed corruption in the appointment of teachers in, in his village. Uh, similarly, Balmiki Yadav was, uh, beaten to death with rods because he asked for information which again exposed corruption and, and, in Narega and, and, and other things. And of course we have known about the Manjunath's case. There's actually been even a feature film made on it. Absolutely. Satyendra Dube, Absolutely. among others. Yes. So it has actually become a, if you want to be an activist using the RTI Act, life could be very, very risky and dangerous for you. Yes, it would, it would certainly, uh, the, you know, the figures show that and, and we are seeing that there is a constant threat, there, there are attacks on people who are using the RTI law and there is a clear need, I mean I believe that there is a moral obligation on the government today to provide protection to these people because after all they are, they are doing a great service to society by exposing corruption where it's happening. Anjali ji, you have talked about whistleblowers protection, protection. Hai, the whistleblowers protection act. It was introduced in 2011 and four years later, sorry, three years later in 2014, it was passed by both houses of parliament. But today, the rules of the rules should not be able to do it. So, what does this law mean to enact? It doesn't have any benefit to anyone. It remains an act on paper. Am I correct? You're absolutely right. And in fact, this law was passed in 2014. People who were RTI users, they were 25 दिन तक धरने करे जो विसल ब्लोअर्स थे जिनकी हत्या हो गई थी उनके परिवारों ने आकर पार्लियामेंट पे विजिल करा और धरने करे तब जाकर ये कानून दोनों सदन सदन के दोनों हाउसेस में पास हुआ लेकिन आज तक इस कानून के लिए जो इसको क्रियान्वित करने के लिए जो रूल्स आने चाहिए थे उनको प्रोमलगेट नहीं किया गया है इन फैक्ट व्हाट द गवर्नमेंट हैज डन इज दैट दे हैव ब्रॉट इन एन अमेंडमेंट बिल इन द पार्लियामेंट व्हिच हैज बीन पास्ड बाय द लोकसभा व्हिच सीवियरली dilutes the whistleblower's protection law. Explain how it has done so. Yes, so, so one of the things that the law states is that it gives immunity to whistleblowers from action under the Official Secrets Act. So if, as a whistleblower, I were to file a complaint, even if it has certain information, uh, which, which would not be allowed to be made public under the Official Secrets Act. Which is an old act of 1923. It's a colonial act, draconian colonial act. Uh, I would get immunity as a whistleblower under the law. Now the government has brought in amendments to take away that immunity, which basically means that if it if it is proven that it violates the Official Secrets Act, the disclosure or the complaint that a whistleblower has made, then they could go up go to jail for up to 14 years. Now that basically kills the whole purpose of a law because even even bona fide uh, whistleblowers will will be worried about coming forth. Mm -hmm. The other thing that the law has done, uh, the amendment bill has done, is that it kind of conflates the right to information law and the whistleblower law. It says that unless certain information which is uh, which is exempt under the RTI, unless there's public interest and so on, unless that information is obtained under the RTI law, it cannot be used by a whistleblower. So that means you're actually diluting the whistleblower's protection. Absolutely, because you think so many government officials, they don't need to file an RTI application to access information. In front of them, file hai. So agar, agar usko aap nahi de paenge, to file. If you don't get the protection of the law, then there will be no benefit for these people. Satendra Dube and Manjuna, who you have mentioned about, to they were part of the government. And they, in fact, should be encouraged 
encouraged people like that to come forth and file a complaint. So the government is actually confusing. The right to information law is meant to put information in the public domain. Whereas what the whistleblowers are doing, they're filing the a complaint within the government. It's not even making it public. Anjali ji, you also have talked about, you know, why the government had once introduced a grievance redressal bill, but then not re reintroduced it. Kindly explain why this bill, together with the Right to Information Act and the Whistleblowers Protection Act, is important. Well, the NCPRI had advocated for a set of anti-corruption laws, which included the Lokpal, Lokpal law, which, uh, which again uh, got passed by both houses of parliament. It's today law, but hasn't been implemented. Not a single Lokpal has been appointed till date by the government. Certain uh, states have appointed Lok Ayukta and many states have not. Some states already had Lok Ayuktas. And uh, the Lokpal, which was awaited at the center, has not become operational because no appointments have been made by the central government. The whistleblower's protection law, like we just discussed, hasn't been operationalized. The third law, which was very important, was the grievance redress law. Because if we look at the people who are asking for the people who are asking for the people, many times people are asking for the people who are asking for the people who are asking for the people who are asking for नहीं करता तो यदि कोई शिकायत करते हैं कि मुझे राशन नहीं मिल रहा पेंशन नहीं मिल रही है तो उनकी शिकायत ठंडे बक्से में चली जाती है कोई उस पर कार्रवाई नहीं होती सुनवाई नहीं होती है नो टाइम बाउंड रिड्रेस हैपन्स सो दिस लॉ वॉज बेसिकली टू एंश्योर दैट वेन समबडी फाइल्स अ कंप्लेंट वेदर इट इज ऑफ करप्शन और इट इज ऑफ यू नो एनी अदर काइंड ऑफ अनियमितता इन द गवर्नमेंट फंक्शनिंग देन इमीडिएटली अ टाइम बाउंड मैनर रिड्रेस इज कंप्लेंट इज रिड्रेस ये कानून आया पार्लियामेंट में था इसके ऊपर स्टैंडिंग कमेटी ने बहुत अच्छा so, एक रिपोर्ट दिया बिटवीन 2012 एंड 2014 विद 2014 द बिल लैप्स्ड जब लोकसभा के इलेक्शन हुए और और भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने कहा था कि हम इस बिल को रीइंट्रोड्यूस करेंगे बल्कि बल्कि कहा कहा था उनका जो घोषणा पत्र में घोषणा पत्र से उन्होंने फ्लोर ऑफ द हाउस पे उनके सीनियर लोगों ने कहा अरुण जेटली जी ने कहा रविशंकर प्रसाद जी ने कहा कि ये बिल हम बहुत जरूरी है इसको लाएंगे प्रधानमंत्री की चिट्ठियां लोगों ने आर के तहत निकाली है जिसमें उन्होंने कहा हमारा प्रायोरिटी क्षेत्र है यह हम लाएंगे क्योंकि हम सर्विस डिलीवरी ठीक करना चाहते हैं लेकिन आज तक वो कानून नहीं आया है माय लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू यू देयर हैज बीन रेजिस्टेंस कटिंग अक्रॉस ऑल पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज द सिक्स नेशनल पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस भारतीय जनता पार्टी नेशनलिस्ट कांग्रेस पार्टी कांग्रेस कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ इंडिया मार्क्सिस्ट कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ इंडिया बहुजन समाज पार्टी दैट पोलिटिकल पार्टी शुड नॉट बी कम अंडर द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ पब्लिक अथॉरिटी बट यू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बिलीव इट शुड बट दैट हैज बीन रजिस्टेड uh why why do you all persist in uh wanting to know what's happening within these political parties and then why do you think it's important because cutting across political lines uh they believe this would be an interference in in their uh, internal working or functioning well it's not just them i think a lot of pe uh, bodies who have been declared public authorities under the right to information act have believed that the right to information is an interference because we have a, you know the the government is used to working in a certain way which isn't necessarily transparent and suddenly an ordinary citizen turns up and wants to know and wants to question because that's really what the right to information act is guaranteeing and we see this resistance from political parties as well to being included under the ambit of the RTI law but the law is very clear the me, one party i think was different the communist party of india well they did it say that funds, uh, they they would have no problem in disclosing their funds but they also resisted being called public authorities under the law and being brought under its ambit now the po the point here is that the law is very clear the law states that anybody who gets substantial funding from the government and therefore what uses is, what is what is substantial substantial funding for example political parties Polit get get okay, land, land they building. get tax uh, tax concessions they 
they get buildings, they get air time but, 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 on... on but uh, if you're a private entity, if you're a non-government organization, I think if I'm one of the court judgments said that only if 95% of your, your, your infrastructure funds have come from the government, then only do you become, should you be considered to be a public Actually, authority? the Supreme Court judgment that you're referring to gave that as an instance. It did not define 95% as the cutoff. So it said that, for example, if there are 95%, but it did not preclude a, a smaller percentage. The idea is very simple, uh, uh, Paranjoy, and it's really the spirit behind the law, which is that if anybody is using public funds, people Money. They People be, have a right to know what know they're how, doing. How their money is being so spent. either don't use public oh, money right. or come under the law. Akri Sawal, Aap Jo Aam Admi hai, Jo Jo Aap Ka Jo Ye Ye Hamare Vartal Aap Sun Rahe Hain, Aap Ko Dekh Rahe Hain, Aap Kya Salah Denge? Okay. How would you? What advice would you give the ordinary person? How how she or he could utilize? Ye Jo Suchna Ka Adhikar Ki Ye Jo Kanun Hai. सूचना का अधिकार कानून का तो लोग जम के इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं तो मेरे ख्याल से इसकी ताकत ही कानून की ताकत ही ये है कि लोग इसको पहचान रहे हैं कि इससे कितनी सूचना ली जा सकती है और जरूरी यही है कि लोग इस कानून का जम के इस्तेमाल करें और अलग-अलग विभागों में अलग-अलग पब्लिक अथॉरिटीज में एप्लीकेशंस लगाएं कमीशन तक जाएं प्रोसेस को छोड़ें नहीं और जो सूचना सामने आती है उसका इस्तेमाल करें और मुझे लगता है कि किसी को सुझाव की जरूरत नहीं है जैसे कि हम बात कर रहे हैं कि पूरे विश्व में सबसे ज्यादा इस्तेमाल सूचना के अधिकार कानून का हमारे देश में ही हो रहा है जितनी बार इस कानून को अमेंड करने की कोशिश की गई है लोग सड़कों पे उतरे हैं लोगों ने इसका विरोध किया है अमेंडमेंट्स का और यही जरूरत है कि लोग इस कानून को लाए क्योंकि उन्होंने इसकी मांग रखी इसका इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं और इसको प्रोटेक्ट कर रहे हैं दैट्स द ओनली वे दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डेमोक्रेटिक राइट विल एक्चुअली थ्राइव इन इन आवर कंट्री थैंक यू वेरी मच अंजलि फॉर गिविंग अस योर टाइम एंड गिविंग अस योर व्यूज ऑन हाउ द राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन एक्ट इट्स इंप्लीमेंटेशन कैन बी स्ट्रेंथेंड एंड मेड मोर इफेक्टिव थैंक यू यू जस्ट हर्ड एंड वाचड अंजलि भारद्वाज आरटीआई एक्टिविस्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर बीइंग विद अस कीप वाचिंग न्यूज़ क्लिक